Something that Elon Musk talks about a lot these days is nuclear energy and its importance for powering the world into a sustainable future. To some people, that might seem a little odd, coming from the guy selling solar panels and battery storage, but it's not about absolutes here. It's about a holistic approach to powering the world. Solar and wind with battery storage is great, and in the long run, that will likely be the way that we go. But it's going to take a very long time to get there. The availability of solar cells and lithium-ion batteries needs to scale up drastically, while the cost to produce them needs to come down by the same measure. For now, these renewable energy sources are lacking in reliability and availability. And a great option that we have to supplement that today is nuclear power. Nuclear is a carbon-free energy source that is always available when needed. But nuclear is also problematic for obvious reasons. There's radioactive waste, there are meltdowns to worry about, and there is a massive cost associated with building and maintaining a traditional nuclear power plant. And that's exactly why we need to stop doing nuclear power the traditional way and start taking a modern day approach to an old world method. We have the technology to make nuclear reactors smaller, more efficient, modular, cost effective, and most importantly, safe. That is the theory behind SMRs, small modular reactors. So let's talk about how they might change the world. So the first thing that we have to do here is cleanse the vision of Homer Simpson's nuclear power plant from our minds. That was a method that worked in the 1960s, but it's not the method that we should be using today. Power plants like that take several years and billions of dollars just to construct, and then the cost of operation is outrageous. Plus, the majority of Americans hate seeing these things, they don't want to see any more nuclear power plants constructed, and that has been the national consensus ever since the Three Mile Island accident of 1979. Now, that was more of a near miss than a full-on disaster, an amount of radioactive gas and iodine was released into the environment near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it's still a matter of debate of whether or not that's had lasting health effects on the people who live there. But either way, we don't want to have to have those debates. That alone was enough to put a halt on nuclear development in the United States, and then Chernobyl happened. So, for a very long time, there was little to no effort being put into improving nuclear power generation. And there was just a little effort being put into developing a better alternative. So the nations of the world just coasted on what they had. And then Fukushima happened. And then everyone decided that they were going to shut down nuclear energy, but they didn't have any plan on where to go after that. A bunch of European nations thought they could just coast for a while on cheap fossil fuel energy imported from Russia. That was a pretty stupid idea, even back when they came up with it, but it has proven to be catastrophically stupid given where things have ended up today. Elon Musk tweeted in March of this year, Hopefully it is now extremely obvious that Europe should restart dormant nuclear power stations and increase power output of existing ones. This is critical to national and international security. Also, nuclear is vastly better for global warming than burning hydrocarbons for energy. So kind of a one-two punch in there from Elon. Not only did you sell away your national security to Russia for cheap gas, but you're also killing the planet in the process. And that's not just Elon playing Captain Hindsight and rubbing salt into the wound. Elon wrote this tweet in December 2021. In less susceptible to extreme natural disasters, nuclear power plants should not be shut down. So, keep nuclear power plants away from oceans, fault lines, and volcanoes. That's pretty easy to do. Maybe make them a bit more idiot-proof because two out of three nuclear disasters were caused by human error. Oh, and maybe don't shoot at them with artillery shells. Russia, I'm looking at you. But what if we could do one better and make nuclear energy more efficient, more cost-effective, portable, scalable, and virtually impossible to screw up? Enter SMRs. 
Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. Luckily for us, there have been some very smart people working on the nuclear energy problem in recent years. A largely unsung effort that has suddenly become a lot more relevant. The modern take is to build something called a small modular reactor. It's the same nuclear fission reaction as a traditional reactor, just worked into a modern package. You can kind of think of a nuclear reactor as the most complicated method ever devised to boil water. Uranium atoms are bombarded with free electrons that split the nucleus of the uranium into two or more smaller nuclei. That splitting process releases a very large amount of energy, and it also creates more free electrons that fly off and split more atoms, so you have an ongoing chain reaction that continuously generates new energy. It is an incredibly powerful reaction. And to get a sense of what uranium is capable of, let's draw a comparison to a conventional fuel source like coal. Burning coal is another complicated way to boil water, and one kilogram of coal can produce 25 megajoules of energy. Now, it doesn't particularly matter what a megajoule is, I don't know, but we do know that one kilogram of uranium can produce 84 million megajoules of energy. That's the difference we're focusing on. That is why we started using nuclear energy to begin with. So, all of the heat created by the nuclear reaction is absorbed by the water, and that causes it to vaporize into steam. We direct the flow of that steam into a turbine, which spins and transfers the steam energy into kinetic energy, and we can turn that into electricity. The steam continues to flow as long as the nuclear chain reaction goes on. We can control the speed of that reaction by introducing control rods into the uranium. A rod made of boron will absorb the free neutrons and prevent them from splitting any more atoms, and that will stop the reaction. Running out of water would also stop the flow of steam, but without water or control rods, the energy from the reaction has nowhere to go and it builds up inside the uranium until... meltdown. And that's bad. So, the SMR intends to package this entire process into one self-contained unit with a passive cooling system and a passive fail-safe mechanism that will automatically prevent meltdown without the need for human input. It's pretty clever, actually. The modern design collects the steam and recondenses it back into water and puts it back into the system. So there are no giant cooling towers involved that release the steam into the outside air. The entire process is taking place underground, and in some designs, the reactor is operating while submerged in a pool of water. So boiling dry is not a concern here. As for the control rods, the modern system uses electromagnets to hold up the control rods, meaning that if the electricity of the reactor was to fail, then the magnet would cease to be a magnet anymore and the rods would drop instantly into the reactor and halt the fission. So that all sounds great, but how small are these things? In terms of size, they vary. But a popular design like the new scale reactor is about 20 meters long and 3 meters across. In terms of power, any reactor that produces less than 300 megawatts of energy is technically an SMR. But the typical unit that is being developed today will be around 75 megawatts. For scale, the top nuclear reactors in service produce around 1600 megawatts. So you do need a bunch of SMRs to equal that. And that's where the modular aspect comes in. You can design a custom power plant fit for your needs simply by choosing the number of reactors. So instead of one giant custom built reactor, you just stack as many small ones as you need. And that means that these small general purpose reactors can actually be manufactured on an assembly line in a factory. And that is where SMRs bring the price of energy down. Mass production equals efficiency, and efficiency equals lower cost. Even in the early stages, SMRs should be around 20% cheaper per megawatt than traditional nuclear power, and that only gets better as they scale up. 
This is the kind of stuff that Elon Musk preaches on a near daily basis. He's building gigafactories for battery production. Someone else might start a gigafactory for SMRs. That's the direction that these are headed. And because they are relatively small, the SMRs can be shipped pretty easily on trucks, trains, boats, even cargo planes. The cost of operation is significantly lower as well. Your typical nuclear power plant actually needs to be refueled pretty frequently, once every 18 to 24 months. And that process involves shutting down the entire plant for about a month to complete. Meanwhile, the SMR technology uses fuel so efficiently that it can run for 20 years. And then instead of refueling, you actually just swap out the old reactor for a new one. The old reactor is sealed in a capsule and stored away. Unfortunately, even with all of this new advancement, there is no way to get around nuclear waste. It's a necessary byproduct of nuclear fission. The only solution to that problem is nuclear fusion, and that's just not possible right now. It may never be possible. So we should make the best of what we have at the moment. And that is what's being done with SMRs. We are about to see these things pop up all over the place. China is building the world's first commercial scale SMR power plant on the island of Hainan. The Chinese are aiming for 100 megawatts per module with six in total, and they expect it to be online before the end of 2023. Canada is also moving forward with SMR development. The provincial governments of Ontario, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, and even Alberta have agreed on a strategic plan to deploy SMRs. Canada's first grid-scale SMR will be the Darlington New Nuclear Project in Ontario. It only just passed the approval stage, but the goal is to produce 300 megawatts of energy there before the end of the decade. In the United States, the federal government is investing millions of dollars into funding SMR development by multiple startup companies, the biggest of those being NuScale, who have had a partnership with the Department of Energy since 2013. Their plan is for a power plant in Idaho that will be up to 12 modules at 77 megawatts per reactor. That would be enough energy to power around 1 million homes, which would be greater than the population of Idaho and probably enough to cover all of Wyoming as well. That's also coming before the end of this decade. So that's something that we have to look forward to. Incredibly powerful new sources of clean energy that don't burn any fossil fuels. That's always nice to have. And it's maybe something that can be fast-tracked into operation in Europe, where these things can really do the most good. Hopefully you learned something about nuclear energy today. Let us know where you see this going in the comments section below. Are you still skeptical on nuclear power, or are you ready for the nuclear future? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.